Hey family, I'm Stephanie Wade. I'm Habasia. Helping your brothers and sisters in Africa, as well as the Creole Griot test. But y'all, I ain't dancing today because I got back pain. Yeah, at 70, sometimes I get what they call intermittent pain, meaning it come and it go. Even though it seemed like it came last night and it haven't left yet. <laughs> I took uh, a bit of leaf. Yeah, a bit of leaf, y'all. Don't look no different than the leaves on the trees here. <laughs> but it grows in my backyard because some of my friends from Nigeria stuck one little branch in the ground once, y'all. One year. And I thought, ah, oh, these crazy folks. This thing is not going to grow. And believe it or not, before the summer was over, it was not just growing, but it was surviving. It has made it through several years now of winters and everything. And then when it grew back, after the big freeze of last winter, I cut it back. And I thought it was dead, y'all, but it grew back looking total brand new. <laughs> And I saw old pictures from when it was first growing until the new plant, and it looks similar. But the older it gets, the leaves start getting different looking. But anyway, y'all, I took a picture of it, Googled it, and made sure it was a match, and it was. And then I chewed a little bit on camera a little while ago. And I'm starting to feel somewhat better, y'all. So I say, let me just sit on this front porch while I'm here and make another video. Because, <laughs> you know, when I'm talking to y'all to keep my mind off of myself. So I'm not hurting now, so don't feel sorry for me. I'm good right now. But, y'all... Y'all know I'm a storyteller, and I have lots of stories to tell. I can't really make up stories about subjects that I didn't grow up with unless I do research about it and then have to read it to you guys and let y'all say what y'all think about it, and I tell y'all what I think about it. <laughs> but that's stories for other days. But I looked at some video, it's about people talking about uh, wanting to travel to different countries and folks who have traveled to different countries all of a sudden thought that since they have YouTube channels that now they're experts <laughs> on traveling somewhere or knowing something and using the people like for a joke or something. And then somebody else who I don't really think have lots of stories. So they use victimhood to do videos. Like lots of people do that, y'all. Always fake rage at somebody for something. Taking it personal. <laughs> it's like. If I felt a certain way, I would have to show some sign. It's like, if I moved from this country, the USA, to anywhere else in the world, we'll just say, hypothetically, Brazil, or Venezuela, or any of those other countries, why would I be talking about people in Brazil? Uh, Venezuela. <laughs> Why would I care what they say about African American culture or whatever? It's like we're not all the same people, y'all. Everybody have different backgrounds, different cultures. Even in something like the United States, North American continent, y'all. We're all so different. You can be on a North American continent and be from Canada, y'all. <laughs> or Mexico. 
It's still North America. So why would I take offense at what somebody says about a certain place that I left? <laughs> if I was so excited about the place, why would I leave permanently? You know, it had to be something going on there that I didn't like is why I left permanently. And if I felt so dedicated to the people that I am call myself defending and my fake rage, <laughs> I would have stayed there and fought with them for whatever it is, for something that could never be done in the first place. We all have free will, y'all, free choice. We all can research what we don't know about, and we are all perfectly free. Hold on. Yeah, my neighbors was using that so much music. I didn't want to get a YouTube thing for the music coming out of their car. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. I had to come in the backyard because it was too much noise in the front. But anyway, y'all. People was talking about folks wanting to travel abroad but not being ready because they don't even have the proper language skills which is true whether i left from here and go somewhere where they may speak Kiswahili or french i would not be ready to move permanently if i didn't know one of the languages there where i could actually have some friends to hold conversations with and not just people that I gave casual greetings to during the day. That wouldn't be enough for me, y'all. Because I like to really interact with people because I'm from the South, y'all. So anyway, I also looked at the people on the, on the news that's on the internet, y'all. Because normally I don't even watch the news. But they had all of these poor people that was trying to immigrate here. And the people was talking, but I couldn't understand what they were saying and I didn't know what language they was using. And it's like, they don't understand that they don't spend so much money and risk their lives to go to a country where nobody even know what they saying. It's like, you can't get a fair shake if you can't even communicate in a language where the people know. I mean, you can't even complain if people don't understand what your complaint is about. So anyway, I looked at one of these people that I casually know online, and he was asking us a hypothetical question on, would you travel abroad with your family or separately? And y'all, this person is somebody where he is an important part of the community where he's from. But if he would move abroad, nobody would know his name. They wouldn't know he had a good YouTube channel. They wouldn't know what position that he, he, he played in his little small community that he was a high-valued person. Y'all, he might even go somewhere where people don't even want you to speak to them. Because sometimes when you speak to people, they'll be like, do you know him? Do you know her? And if the answer is no, they just mad because you even spoke to them at all. I remember when we was living in Chicago, I had to teach my young children not to talk to strangers because they come from the south and go to the north, which was Chicago, and they will speak to the people in the elevators because, yeah, we lived in a complex that was on uh, Lakeshore Drive. And so you could see Lake Michigan from where we were in our apartment, y'all. But there was the meanest people in the world. 
my children would speak to them, our children would speak to them, and they would take their nose and stick it in the air. And it didn't matter what they looked like, y'all. They all was just northern as far as I'm concerned. Just not friendly people, period. So I had to teach my children to stop speaking to people they didn't know so they wouldn't get their little feelings hurt when the people wouldn't speak back to them. So it's all of these cultural shocks that you can get even when you just go from one part of your own country to another. So that's one important factor that you have to think about when you're moving abroad or thinking of moving abroad. It's like, do you really want to start from square one when you're already pretty much at the top of the ladder where you are? Especially when you add it in with your YouTube, or not YouTube, any social media income. Y'all, if you add, just say, permaculture in the mix where you can become self-sustainable, even when it comes to your income getting stretched because you're growing your own food, having a garden in your backyard or a container or whatever, your life will be easier, y'all, than to give yourself added stress of traveling abroad with your whole family and have to worry about babysitters and all and schools and all kind of other things. But y'all grown. <laughs> y'all gonna do what y'all want. All I say is just research, research, research and consider what will happen in the long run. It's not just about money, y'all. It's about time. And time being money, you're not gonna get any younger. Anyway, y'all, my neighbor dogs and come outside so I don't want them overrunning my talk. So anyway, let me know what y'all think about people going from one country to another when they already have uh, uh, families of their own. <laughs> Do they abandon them where they are and send for them later after they finish their struggles for a year or two and miss all of their time growing up when you cannot get that back? Cannot get back your, the children's innocence and all of their developing years when they're forming their ideas of right and wrong, that you are a very important part of their lives. That missing part can never be replaced. Let me know what you think. Have you ever thought of just uprooting your family and going somewhere else, knowing you're leaving all your family behind wherever you're coming from? Even in Galveston, sometimes people say, oh, you done abandoned us for the Gambia. And that's not true, y'all. I tell them, I love Galveston. I did not abandon Galveston for the Gambia. I just go back on and forward, y'all. I have my family and my friends here. I have my house, my car. I can take myself where I need to go. And I can save money here to pay for my projects there. <sighs> Life is good and interesting, y'all. It's nice when you don't have to just make one particular choice. If you could be somebody that's bi-coastal. But not everybody have that opportunity. But I will prefer to build up where I am, if it was somewhere my family had been for generations and generations and generations that I could tell my stories to my children and have the support system of the whole community as opposed to going somewhere new and having to form a new community in that new place and being seen as an outsider all the time. 
because that may not be such a good thing to be y'all. And imagine all the children struggles you thinking them having a better life. They may not even see themselves as members of where you left again. Sometimes building up where you are is a good thing. Especially if you know that you can have fresh food where you are, fresh air, be somebody special as opposed to a fast-paced cat. <laughs> have to struggle to try to make it up the ladder once again. <laughs> but it's always about choice, y'all. I always say that. But anyway, not going to make it long. It's just something that's to help you think. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. I want to know y'all. I do. Tell me what y'all think. Y'all thinking of moving away from your family and friends of where you are right now? Are you thinking about moving away to somewhere else where you already have a friend or two and a new place and they offer you what you think of as a good job? What do you think, y'all? Go on giving up what they say. One bird in a hand is better than two in a bush. That's what my grandmother used to say. But well, what do you say? Do you want the two in the bush? Because <laughs> in the two in the bush, one or two of them might even get away when you get where you're going. The grass is not always greener on the other side. I love traveling, y'all. But my money comes from this side of the world. So when I'm on this side of the world, I can always send money on the other side and do things while I'm still here. And that's a nice feeling, y'all. And I don't even have to make any out-of-the-way decisions <laughs> like selling my house or selling my car or making nobody homeless or whatever. <laughs> But it's always about choices, y'all. Subscribe if you have not. Hit the notification bell so you will know when I upload new exclusive content from just me, one little YouTube creator. I have no team, no videographer, none of that. I don't have no money for that, y'all. I, I monetize finally, not even a month. Who knows when I'll get my first check. But I'm enjoying telling my stories to all of you just the same as when I never even got one penny for telling y'all stories. So anyway, y'all, until next time, peace, peace, power to the people. And I'm out, y'all. Bye.